say anything special for you? No. Okay. Seating of alternates. I'll move we seat James Knight for Mike McCoo. Go here, second. Second. And I'd like to move. Any, any well, sorry, I can't do that because I'm also an alternate. You're also an alternate. Eric is teaching. He's an alternate. All right. Who's second? I didn't. You at first? And uh, we're going to need one more, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, Tom no. says he's going to be here, so I mean, if we want to. We can do Tom once he gets here, or do you want to just do it now? Uh, yeah. We're doing now, or we're watching the end of the day. Or will we uh, see Tom Smith for uh, Bobby Knight? Sorry. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Is that all one option, or do we need two separate ones? Let's do it, two separate ones. Did I, I didn't call for him. I, oh, I'm sorry. Voting on the first one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Voting on the second one, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. There we go. Look at that. Two down. Is anybody present to speak not on the uh, agenda? Okay. Three down. Approving of the minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of 828? They, now that they've been filed. Second. We have a, a motion and a second. Any discussion on the 28 minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Uh, approval of the minutes for 9-11. Ready to post it? Yes. Well, I sent them to the Town and Clark. Yeah, they were sent out. I I sent them out to I just you. Have, no, I got them I, from your email, which was that yes, email. But that's why I asked you. I had sent them to. Town email, well, so. Awesome. Oh, I, I didn't get that one, but I, I, I did send them to the Town and Clark last week. <clears throat> and then I didn't see them, that's why I sent them to everybody else. Motion to accept. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stay. One abstention? Who is it? Okay. Last week we had a lot of problems come up. We didn't have any solutions come up. So I asked if somebody would come up with a solution to anything. <laughs> I, I wanted to hear something positive. So, does anybody have anything positive? I'll start with you, Chief. Do you have anything positive? Okay. Not not as of yet. Tyler? No, I have questions. I mean, I, I, oh, I, ha I have a load of questions, too. I, 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 I actually wrote those down. All right, me too. So, I have some questions. You know, we, we heard from quite a few people at the last meeting. Yeah. I have some questions of... One going to hell first election question. So okay. I'll yield to you and you tell me that's appropriate. I, I think we're gonna to go to that at step seven because I have questions still. Okay. Alright. Good job. Stuart, do you have anything for us? Nothing? Alright, shoot. That's a big negative. Alright, let's continue with our SWOT analysis. Uh, I'd like to hear some internal strengths. Do we have any strengths other than what we already have? So, we. Well, <coughs> well that's pretty up to date. Well, strong, <coughs> department, our personnel, good townspeople support, unified call response, paid staff, and <coughs> culture. I believe culture was for both Yes, we have, we have cultural differences and we have cultural similarities. Everybody wants to be a firefighter. Except if you 
score a couple points higher than you can be a cop. Or less. Oh, well, well, say, <laughs> I had to get that in before you guys got your shot. Um, all right. I, I think one of the strikes we're going to want is the financial, financial work. We're financially responsible. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I, I think not a lot of people are probably aware of this, but the, the fact that unlike the majority, 99% of other towns or other uh, departments with ambulances, all of the income that comes in from the insurance billing, the medical billing for ambulance transports, all gets put into a reserve fund, which is called Fund 17, which you can probably boast that I think we're working in 19 years now. Yeah, the town of Wilmington does not use taxpayer dollars to buy a fire truck or an ambulance. It's all come out of this fund. Uh, most, if not all, the agencies around us they utilize the new billing, which is almost everybody. That money is is kept separate from the town for various purposes. Um, so, the area that makes us a profit center, right? The profit center that benefits the taxpayers and the town of Right. Is for, yeah, vehicles and capital equipment at the time. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 don't, I think the townspeople know that. I don't think so. That was one of my questions, actually. Um, where did I put my questions page? Um, now, there's, there's, there's not too many towns around us or in the state for that matter that can boast that the taxpayers have not bought a fire truck or an ambulance in 19 years. Well, yeah, that was one of my questions, is, is the pay for our paid personnel, mm -hmm. including uh, uh, benefits, <coughs> is that number less than the money that comes into Fund 17? No, it's more. No. Oh, okay. It's more. So it's, it's not actually, it, it's going towards trucks, but it's not actually a, a profit center because <coughs> our, our, our cost to get that money is higher than the money we're bringing in. The cost to get that money is higher than the money we're bringing in. That's, that's, that's accurate. accurate. Right. Because okay. Of, because of the coverage we have now. Yes. Right. When it first started, right. we, were right. we were covering payroll. Right. And we were covering right. ambulance. But it, 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 it currently it does it not. It currently does not. No. Okay. No. I, I was mistaken then because I thought it was covering it. No. All right. Um, got anything for us, Tom? No, just what's the difference roughly between the payroll and, and the uh, income from the ambulance? 300,000? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's too. It's fairly accurate. Uh, payroll is approximately 500,000. Uh, income, gross revenues, or last time I checked, was about two and a quarter. Um, out of the two and a quarter, not only do they pay for the trucks and Things like that that you see also the uh, there's a ten percent fee for the uh, billing agents that we use and also paying for the paramedics uh, services to right. so yeah. Wyndham or Rockville or uh, yeah. mm -hmm. paramedic fees are paid for that. Those are fees that we we negotiate the fees. Yeah, but they they'd be fees that we're paying anyways. Yes. And all of Fund 17 just goes to trucks. It doesn't go to anything else. Salaries or anything. No. Um, some years, well, Board of Finance well, different capital items. Yeah. Chooses to put ten thousand dollars in. I think what they've done off and on over the last couple of years. But that's it. So it's all capital and projects. Right. Yeah. But all that money's turned over to the town. The Board of Finance makes a decision. Right. 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 And where I just was trying to figure out. Okay. What's the cost of I mean, your trucks? You're here to your tanker, put it back your in. Your tanker was bought out that money. Right, right, I know. I know what the trucks are bought. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what the uh, the cost of the trucks are compared to maybe putting it back in the salaries. We also have a revenue off of the cell phone tower lease behind our station, and we turn $24,000 of that over to the town as well. 
two system payroll. Two um, system payroll. So this is that that brings up the next question: What is the income from the cell tower? It goes up and down depending on year on the what carrier is on it and whatever. But that's probably the twenty-four thousand represents three quarters of what we get off of that. So you're gonna make me do the math? It's about thirty thousand dollars plus or minus a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. roughly. And so that twenty-four is over and above your grant for your. Yeah, we payroll. write a, we write a monthly check back to the town. Um, so the, the payroll's not funded one hundred percent by the town. Right, right. He just said it's yeah. you know twenty-five and it comes from the tower. So, but the funds from the town it doesn't deduct from that. It's the funds from the town. Because we, we were paying the, uh, what we call the driver shift, the 5P to 5A out of that money. Yeah. And now it's all part, as time went on, it all got lumped together, and we just give the town a monthly check. Yeah, like I said, the reason why I ask is maybe we shifted things like instead of buying trucks, all the money from funds on the payroll, and then it reduces your budget or whatever. You know. It's all the same. Depending on the it's all, the it's all the same pot of yeah. money. Yeah. Well, that's what I said. I know. I just promised you. You used to buy trucks. You used it for payroll. Then the time you don't buy trucks. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, but the, the the question of is payroll higher or lower than than fund seventeen? Is oh, it's definitely higher. Definitely higher. Three hundred thousand. All right. It's higher. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. and that's and that's that's the norm. Yeah. No. No. I'm I'm not saying that it's, it's right or wrong. I'm just trying to figure. Yeah. And, it's not a wash. I think. Well, I was hoping that we were making money. So, <laughs> well, you have to you have to look at it. Depends how you look at it. Without fund seventy, if, without the agreement that we have in place, right? You'd be you know, over the years you would have bought over a million dollars with the fire truck. Oh, so no, no, no. It, so, not, it depends how you look at it. Yeah. No, no. I well, like you said, it's a wash. I mean, the, the money from but if, 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 back if we didn't have the pay guys, then. So. then we wouldn't have Fund 17, but we'd be back to zero on everything, and then we wouldn't have any coverage. Right. And, you, and we still have to buy so, fire trucks. And we still have to buy right. fire trucks. Right. Yeah. right. It's a, it's a win-win, it really is. All right. So let me put this down. I'm not sure whether this is a weakness or a threat, because I'm I'm looking at it not as a firefighter. I'm looking at it as, a, as, as somebody from the town. Is that there's a certain amount of financial opacity. I'm not even sure how to say the correct word. Uh, opacity. Not clarity. Uh, when when we're running everything through, uh, if, if, if the town had a fire department and ran everything through the town, we, all, these, all these dollars would be very clear. It is not. They are now. It is now. The town, the town pays all right. The town side, they're very so, so, we so, have any money? The town. We get a budget amount per year, hundred and twenty thousand more or less for each department. All right. Roughly speaking, the town never gives us that money. Right. They hold that money. Okay. We, we submit our bills for payment. We submit POs. And yes. with a purchase order signed in our case by the chief and the president, and they pay the town of Wellington writes the checks as town of Wellington on it. All right. And they pay the bill. So when we ask for reports, which you. Uh, typically or at least monthly until the end of the fiscal year, probably every week or two as we submit bills. Uh, the All the financial reporting comes out of the town's financial office. Okay. They say, this is what you spent for the year. So the town town sees all of the money coming into Fund 17, mm -hmm. all the money going out for payroll, all the money coming in from the cell tower, all the money, yeah. total transparency. No, that's the cell tower money, it's not the town's money. No, but they, they, they give, the, the fire but department gives a portion of the money that comes in. They each each department has private funds. Right. And and I think so we know how much we get from their cell tower, but we don't know how much the cell tower right. comes in because it doesn't belong to the town of Wellington. Right, but if, if the fire department belonged to the town of Wellington, then all that money would be coming to the town of Wellington. Yeah, in theory. Maybe, maybe that cell tower would be there. I don't, yeah, you, I mean, that, it it might not be there. there right. yeah. But, you know, theoretically. And on the payroll side, the town does the payroll as well. Right. So okay. any reports from in terms of uh, expenses for the paid personnel come from the town of Wellington. <coughs> One of the reasons we did this about 20 years ago was we wanted that transparency. We wanted that that uh, be held accountable 
and have reports instead of coming from us. Right. So you're coming from your town's finance office. The ambulance pulling money, we never see it. It never goes in our account. It goes, the billing agent deposits right. the money. Right. You're in the and it's a, a joint account with the town of Wellington, and they withdraw the money as they see fit to put it. Not, not to fund 17 either. There's a fund, there's a grant. It's a separate fund for the for the, the grants that the fire departments get. So it's not fund 17, that is a separate fund. All right. So but the money that comes general from fund, the we move it collection agency for the ambulance, is that going to fund 17? Yes. yes. So that that's, 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 that's what I'm talking about. So yeah. Yeah, I, was, I was right on what I was asking. I may not have been clear on what I was asking. But the money that the town gives through the Board of Finance to both departments is very clear. You yeah. can walk into okay. the finance office at any point and request. You know, anyone could have a line of the reason I'm asking that is because uh, at the last Board of Finance meeting that the money for the new land grant came up. There was a number of people on the board that were upset that we were giving money to a private organization to do something that was going to go towards the town. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I don't know if that's a problem or not. I just, I think it's something that should be mentioned. I've heard it from you hear different sides, from different yeah. residents. Everyone, I think, has an opinion. Because they yep. are two separate corporations. Right. That I don't think everybody understands they have their own monies as well as monies that are provided by the town. Yeah. Not every resident. Well, I think, I think that's what I was trying to aim at when I said there's not total clarity, total transparency. It's because they do have monies of their own that, that the town doesn't see. I, so, that, so there's not total transparency. It's it's there is some there's there's some wiggle room in there for for because they are separate corporations. Is that is that false? That that we don't see the money that you you like. But I don't think it's them not being transparent. No, no. I'm, I'm no. just saying that we we it's not that if we ask they wouldn't tell us. Right. It's just that we don't necessarily know to ask. Or we don't have access to or the we don't, picture. There's only a certain portion of the. Or there's a, parent, a, a point where I, I, I believe we don't. <coughs> you know? Yeah, we know. It's, it's, it's your business. In our case, I mean, we have, we have monthly meetings. I mean, that are open to the encourage the public to attend. All right. So, I mean, I mean that's what we talk about with those things. So, there's business mm -hmm. and all that happens there. So, we, we, we love that people come here. I'm, I'm sure they're not trying to hide it. I'm just no, saying that. No. There ain't, there ain't a lot it's of it's it's not it's not as red, I wouldn't say that it's not transparent, Peter. I hear what you're saying. It's just not as readily available to townspeople because it's not taxpayer dollars. Right. That's the difference. Right. There's taxpayer dollars and then there's private because we contract a service from mm -hmm. two private corporations. Well, that's, that's a very good point, Eric. And I don't know if you're aware of this, Pete, or how many people in the audience are aware of it, that both, both fire departments operate under a contractual agreement with the town. So there were, there were contracts that were drawn up um, quite a few years ago that... that <coughs> Not that lengthy, but based on my recollection, five, six pages of the expectations and requirements of the agency of the two fire departments and the town as well. Um, so for you know compliance issues and mm -hmm. things like that, and it, it very it, it kind of it will probably satisfy some of your curiosity. Not that I'm not that I'm diminishing your knowledge of the fire service, but it it really lays the, the a nice foundation for. We're going to give you this money. What are we going to get for it? Where are, you know, there's indemnification, things like that. Mm -hmm. So who owns the building? Who's going to maintain the buildings? What, what's your, what is your responsibility for your building? What's the town going to support? <coughs> All that stuff is in there. Um, so they're, and those probably haven't been looked at recently. They probably should be updated because there's things in there that are, you know, based on my recollection of drafting this thing, it is there's um, yearly requirements of both agencies in there that they're supposed to submit to the Board of Selectmen, which there are. I don't do you ever submit anything? I do. I just have to submit my annual report. That's not one. That's not to the board. That's not one. There's a link to it. It's not done. It was drafted in 2011, and it's a five year um, automatically, automatically unless renewing unless the list. Divine right. intervention on either right. side. So we actually <coughs> used that agreement to take um, the town's side of it to draft an agreement to do something similar with the library good. board. So there's good language in yeah. there. Um, this just spells out. Basically, what they came into the marriage with, mm -hmm. what each brought well, into the boundaries it. are. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and there are ways for both departments to get out um, yeah. of the contract or for the town to remove. So, 
So I mean, there's basic performance measures that have to have to be met. There's um, you know requirements that each agency maintain their their what is owned by the town, uh, maintain it, you know, for preventing this and making sure that it's being repaired properly and all those records need to be available. Are these contracts identical? It's all uh, contracts signed by both. Yeah, with the exception of of naming the apparatus. Yeah, all right. But yeah, they're, they're pretty close. Yeah. yeah. The, the reason and the reason I ask that question is because if, if, if we're looking at consolidation someday, then, then there's contractual issues that, that will come up. Yeah, I mean, there's actually a contractual agreement. There's a contract, there's a lawyer. There's another one. There's a contractual agreement between the fire department and the town of Willington regarding Fund 17 that was drafted many years ago as well. Um, but, you know, and in that contract, the, the priorities um, the priorities of Fund 17 were, were primarily because it's because of the, the fund exists because of the animals billing, the, the board of selectors and board of fines at the time you know, all mutually agreed that the priority needs to be the maintenance and the, re and the replacement of the ambulance as needed in any capital items um, for the ambulance. And after that, the fire apparatus came into play and other capital <coughs> items. Um, but, you know, as an example, one of the things in there is that, you know, Willington One reserves the, the right for the, the, the uh, specification bidding process for the new ambulance uh, when, it's, when it's needed. So there, there's little, there's interesting things in there um, that, that people really, no offense there, but over, as administrations change, it gets forgotten about. Yes. You know, the fact that we have a contract, whole thing, you have contracts with the town has probably been forgotten about. Um, I'm glad to do this not with you because you referenced it. But, um, <laughs> those things, you know, those things need to be looked at from time to time as well to make sure that they're current and updated and uh, make sure that everyone's in compliance with them. One of the things that I believe is an advantage for that Fund 17 contract is it holds uh, that might primarily to do emergency services yeah. funding only. So yeah, if the school wanted to buy a, a lawnmower, you can't go to Fund 17 for it. The public works needed something. Fund 17 is not the fund for yeah. that. Yeah. We collect the lead from animals billing. They're putting the funds into 17, and they will uh, stay within kind of that scope of uh, engagement. Uh, right. In comparison to some other towns where they pocket the uh, billing money a lot more than we make through a much busier town, and they keep half of it, you have to move back for the paid staff. So the town makes a half million dollars to spend on something else, uh, but you got to do 20,000 calls to get there and whatnot. And the contract does have terms in which, let's say, a merger were to happen, there's a, a time, uh, an established time frame in which you can make a change to that or be removed from that contract. So it wouldn't be, that contract wouldn't hinder the departments from making a change if that's what's so divided. It's either a set term mutually agreed upon, uh, a set term or a different mutually agreed upon type of I think just for point of clarification, that ambulance billing is strictly for transport. So if the ambulance goes to a cloud and nobody gets transported to the hospital, there's no money. Right. So so you don't you don't you don't have that refuse to transport no, you form you, you, you can't build you can't build dead people. Either. Yeah. And where we well, were you don't you don't transport dead people anymore, right. do you? Right. I mean you're used to it. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm, there, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> you know, one of the big misconceptions is if we go to Lime Manor a lot, we go to Senior Way a lot, that those are big, you know, big calls. Because we go there a lot, we make a lot of revenue off those. We don't. Especially if it's an ALS call. The medic makes more money than we do. Oh, I'm, I'm, I am. Yeah. I'm assuming your building company has a breakdown of all the calls that they look for. Yeah. Yeah, and the town gets uh, monthly reports. Yeah. Yeah. I, Ron and I get a copy of it. Is there any contract you need? Eight four. We like, hold yeah, with the town. Uh, yeah, we have, we, have, we, have, we have the PSA for it. You do. Okay. Yeah. Is there any money coming from the town you need? Other than except billing? for billing, mm -hmm. right now. So they don't have any other English for the other side of town right now. You know, we do, 
Okay, considering the low call volume, I mean, we, we do fairly well because you know, a lot of their call volume up there is accidents, which are typically decent payers versus uh, you know, Medicare and Medicaid funds. You, you want somebody with insurance? Yeah. Yes. It's, it's insurance recovery program. Good insurance. <laughs> Um, so those contracts would be interesting to get if we did want to actually review those at some point. I, I, think, <coughs> I, I think they'd be interesting to read at the very well, least. I was just going to suggest maybe we can get an email to everybody. Close the books on last fiscal year, so the year end reports are available if you want to read those. It's varied based on town leadership. Um, it's ranged from that to um, the workers' comp carrier just throws their hands up and screams to the fire, 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 fire EMT. So the, the town <laughs> covers all the workers' comp for both for paid personnel and to the volunteers. So it, it doesn't make any sense, really, why they don't do it. But so why are they not town employees? Is that what you're saying? It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it really, it's, 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 it's more than a six and one half does the other. It doesn't matter. The only thing it does for us from the corporate side is this creates much more work and we're 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 a, an employer. You have to comply with any you know any other well, rules that an employer does. All that stuff. You do it. <coughs> you do it. Yeah, when we had all the snow in the school or the, in the library and had to shovel the roofs off, we were up there shoveling the roof of the library and the town office building and stuff. Because the fire chief told me to. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not done. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's kinda of, it's kinda of odd. 
that's that's just how it's how it's been and how it continues to be. But it does add another layer where you have you have the, the, the fire department administration, but you also have and you're an employer as well. So you have employees and you have all these other things that go along with that. Right. All right. You have a union contract to uphold and enforce and discipline and all those things. <clears throat> Which is, you know, uh, you know, is is done. Um, <clears throat> that administration side of the business is done for free. You know, nobody, myself, Ron, you know, we don't get, we don't get paid to negotiate contracts. Uh, mm -hmm. It's 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 kind of it's kind of funny. I know somebody you know, made a comment to me that you have a, the town of has a public works department, a public works director. How many employees in public works? Four. No, well, five. If you count the transfer station, yeah, six, four, six. Five, six. So you have the Wellington Fire Department, who you have is a, an employer, has a supervisor, which is the fire chief. You have, you know, a president who is part of the employer-employee relationship in the process, who has 14 employees. Um, so it's it's kind of a it's always been kind of a funky thing that I think we're the dumb ones for doing for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, scheduling, yeah. employee issues, insurance. I mean, all those things. Yeah. It's like any other employer. You have to deal with it. Yep. <laughs> the scheduling is done by the chief, who is not a paid chief. Because you know? when I became chief, because the other previous chief had worked there, but he wasn't a paid chief. Were you going to be a paid chief? No. If they were There's town, no paid chief. If they were town employees, how could you imagine that being handled? Um, well, I, I think it would have to be spelled out in some type of understanding. Like who's going to negotiate the contract? You would, you would certainly yield to the fire department, yield to the fire chief. I mean, as an example, some of these towns had to have um, you know, the town of Mansfield, as an example, the town manager or the, the HR director, the assistant town manager, the fire chief, are part of the negotiation process. So the town would end up having a little bit more no, buy-in. No, no, no. We don't have any of those. Right, right. 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 The, the, the town would have a little bit more buy-in, a little bit more control over what's going on and what, you know, what we're agreeing to or not agreeing to. Um, the, you know, a, a grievance, as an example, would be handled, you know, through how you handle grievance now. You just have to, you have to deal with a different unit, that's all. You know, I mean, luckily we have there's a, there's a, there's a union there. Right, and, but there's, might be a, there's a lot easier. Right, the structure here would have to change as to who yeah. would be the supervisor of that sure. department. Absolutely. Sort of department. Yep. Um, yep. So we're thinking Willington <coughs> was. So there's definitely a structural changes change that would have to occur. No. Everything, you know, I'm leaving money out of this equation, but. Yeah, my next question, and I, I and we, we've got into chairman's questions now because I wasn't hearing a lot on SWAT, so cool. we're into chairman's questions. Did anybody fix the radio programming problem close two weeks ago? Is everybody's radios programmed the same way now? That's a little bit harder than you think. But yeah. Has anybody made a call? Has TN I know. figured out what they want yet? Yes. We know exactly what we want. Okay. <laughs> we're crystal clear. But. Um, I know you, Trevor has reached out to Bobby. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to Bobby today. He's going to to Trevor so we can get all the radios the same exact thing. Beautiful! We so we made that, a step. Yeah, we just got that correspondence from Doug on the uh, I feel accomplished. Tap channels and stuff. So. Yeah. And that's November 1st, so we Yeah. <laughs> I think we're ready to probably do a list of stuff. It's just mad. I'd like to see all our radios identical channels, you know. So we just have to get to know Trevor and Bobby. And do you have a radio contractor? Yeah, but not for really. I mean, we basically do our own programming. It's just for sales. Sales okay. is our radio contractor. It comes out and installs and sales. And, yeah. and he took over from the guy that used to work out of his house. Um, did radios for Yukon for years. Kopke. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, we use a couple different vendors. We use Dance Radio. We use that, uh, that's what I was thinking because I've, I've always had pretty good luck dealing with them. Yeah, we use them. Uh, we use Connect Radio for some of the stuff for sales and stuff sometimes. Is there any kind of. Uh, Efficiency and using the same vendor. Yes. Um, 
in terms of the maintenance of what the setup that we have to do now, the each radio has a program in it, that you generally call a code block. Right. It's a <coughs> list of all the features of the radios, what buttons do what, what channels are where, how many character display do you have, so on and so on and so on. They're different for every radio. So uh, one example is we have uh, Kenwood 8180 UHF mobile radios. Um, and what they held out the grant for theirs, they bought a different model. Not to say Ford versus Chevy, one's right. better or worse than the other. But we'll develop the code book for our radio. We can't give it to them. They have to do their own, either use their vendor or their own software to program their own radios because they're not compatible between the two. Same thing with the portable radios, and same thing with perhaps a lot of the mobile radios. Um, that if it's a different brand, being for either a different model, sometimes even a different firmware version, you have to write custom uh, configuration files for each of these. So not having the same radios doubles the work. You know, you just gave me a headache, right? <laughs> Next life. <laughs> Finances aside, would it be of advantage to the town to have a, a fire administrator that could, could uh, figure some long-range planning and some consolidation so that everybody was using the same same radio vendor, everybody bought the same radios, everybody bought the same, uh, I, I, there's a better word than Hearst tool because the Hearst is an I mean, extrication, extrication tool. Everybody has the same uh, hose cl clamps or whatever the hell you put hoses together with. Yeah, I mean, I think you know my, my experience with some of the the, the the fire administrators that I'm familiar with, it, it's it's much more um, it's much deeper than that, Pete. That that's certainly one part of it is when you have two agencies to make sure that they have compatible equipment and um, you know the things like that. But I think the the main impetus for for a lot of these. Um, ones that have sprouted up in the last 10 years has to do generally with firefighter safety. And they have to do with, um, you know, physicals and making sure that required training is performed. You have your live burns, you have, you know, your, your, your proper physical being conducted, you have mm -hmm. um, your blood work pathogens that's completed every year. Um, it's, it's more of a general oversight, but it also has relieved the agencies from having to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so they can, you know, the theory is that they can more, they can focus more on the operational side of things instead of the administrative side. And the, the, the fire administrators um, end up absorbing the administrative side of the organizations, which again frees them up to do what really people like to do, which is fight fires and go to accidents and go to medical calls. Right, right. Um, and the other thing I'm thinking of is long range planning. Yeah, apparatus purchasing, um, you know, uh, specifications, all, all that <laughs> stuff is really put on the shoulders of the fire administrator. Buying land. Sure. Yeah. I mean, does that does that mean that 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 person is the end all be all? Um, no. I mean, there's you know, in, in both cases that I'm familiar with, which is Mansfield and um, well, before the fire chief in Mansfield, but uh, back when they had a fire chief and then the one in Coventry, is that they're really the liaison from the town council or the board of selectmen to the fire service. Does he he or she ultimately take their their marching orders from the town manager or the first selectman? Yes, they do, but they report to the town council. Um, but kind of representing the fire and EMS agencies in that town. And they, and they did do exactly what you said. They, they, they really provide some long-range planning. So um, this is a position that you wouldn't need to be against? Is that a question to you personally? Yeah, that's a that question to you personally. No, no, because, because I've seen it work. It comes with a couple of things, too. A cost is one. Right. You typically don't well, that's why that I left free. that part out. Yeah. That's that's because you, people you, aren't free. typically talking about, right, $80,000 a year. And then the second side of it is finding somebody non-biased for two departments. I mean, that, that would mm -hmm. work fairly in either, either side, either case. So there right. are two big problems. Oh, no, no. I, I understand there's issues, but I was just wondering if this is this would be a, a net plus or... And, and, it, and it might it might solve a lot of these other issues. So my personal seeing. opinion is a town this size and departments this size can probably work out those things a little better than we do, but not to that extreme. A couple other options I thought of is one, continue this committee. And then perhaps if one would get away from the issue of consolidation or not consolidation, can we get together monthly and go, hey, you know, 
we think of buying some radios, let's talk together let's about talk this about radios. before we do it on a, on a more voluntary basis. The advantage of a fire administrator, in theory, there's somebody authority that goes behind it of, uh, no, I won't authorize that purchase, you're not going to get the money for that. There's some authority. And there's some middle ground, some towns have fire commissions. I believe Andover has one. Uh, well, whether it's the fire administrator or the fire commission, in some cases like Bolton, the, all the expenditures are approved by that person or that, that commission as well. So it's a little bit more of a, from a, from a, a, a town perspective to the, to the fire administrator or the fire commission, that's the checks and balances that, that occurs. Yeah, well, that's what I said. It's recommended out of nothing is those studies that we have prior. Yeah, it, it's, it's been brought up a few times here and there. Yep. Yeah, I went to a referendum, correct? Fire Commission, mm -hmm. the referendum got yeah. shot down? Town meeting. Yeah. Town meeting. Town meeting. Yeah, town meeting. Got shot down. Well, yeah, I mean, let's be frank. You got shot down because Willing to Hill lobbied so heavily against it. Whatever the case may be, the votes are the votes. I mean, you know, whoever turned out to vote, I mean, again. <laughs> but, I mean, at the time, we only was in favor of it. The first, second, were in favor of it. The final was in favor of it. The capital proof appeal was in favor of it. Um, but it, it, went to, it went to a top meeting and it got, it got defeated. So. Yeah, yeah, just like everything else, there's negative sides to it, just like I expressed before. I think, like Stuart said, we could reach some agreements on a, on a personal level. Um, as opposed to going to the fire commission, which right. poses a lot of problems. Well, our, I, I wasn't even thinking about whole commission because, uh, or, or even tell you the truth, my, 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 my old man once told me the only committee that works well is a three-man committee where one person's sick and one person's absent. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I, 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 I'd like to. Get ruminate on that topic for a while <coughs> off, off off meeting site where maybe people could just think about it and see where, where yeah. what they have to think about that um, and then um, last meeting would this be helpful to get some job descriptions of a, from, yeah. of, of a fire commission and a, a fire fire administrator, administrator. Okay. Yeah. I'll send that to, to you There's, is that I'm, I, I'm sure we don't have to reinvent the wheel on that Nobody does. It's plagiarizing. Yeah, plagiarizing everything. Yeah. Plagiarism is such a word. Fitting. R A. Um. All right, and 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 I guess the last question on my list. Of what woke me up at three in the morning the other day with this nonsense is uh, we're talking about the. Uh, Responder notification systems. Who knows who's responding? And how the hell the, how does that work? Is it work off your pagers or something? Phone. Phone. You want to demonstrate? So when call is put out, we all get. So well, don't, don't say we all. Just have that. Each department has a different <laughs> program. All right. So, so, which, Willing said one. Okay. Nobody has those videos. <laughs> all right. We get those. It comes up as what the call is. We can map it. All right, directions. And then, then you have a button that you hit that yep. says "I'm going." Responding, responding unavailable. All right, and the chief has a thing that uh, so everybody can see everybody who's responding. Yep. And then, All right. And is, and why do we have two different systems? Thought to. They're just the same thing. I mean, uh, I think. No, no. I was a rhetorical question. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> And on the same note, we've, we've discussed getting together and either reviewing one or the other and picking one or the other, but again, it's one of those things that just is not low on the priority list and hasn't happened yet. Right. Let's, let's move that up the priority list so that I don't have a stroke. Um, that, I, I guess right. what does... Well, there's a call. I, I, I think there's a the continuity across, across the town. Right, except that they currently each have systems and... Right. Making one of them change is going to come with a cost. It's going to take away from something else. Well, I, actually, it would, yeah, would save money. The, the pricing scheme from one company is a flat rate up to so many calls per year. Um, I think it's about $800, yeah, yeah. roughly speaking. Yeah. The other vendor prices it per user at $11 per person. So in our case, we're spending like $250, um, and you're spending $800. Mm -hmm. If you would let us on your system, 
it would save us us slash the town to yeah, which we're, 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 we're fine with it's just but what you guys want to do perhaps right? just as important is when you look and see who's responding to the call do I have nobody coming do I have lots of people coming I can't see anybody from what they know that's going they and they, they can't see us yes yes either annual yeah. Calendar year. I, th I think annual? we can give up the tour well, remainder of the tour right? So it's so calendar or, year, or, year. Or depending on how many members they have, it may be cheaper for them to come to right. our platform yeah, and again, have to review it and whichever. See what's on. I'm guessing right. it would be a washer or somewhere, but let's do that. The town would dearly like to save either two hundred and fifty or eight hundred dollars or something <laughs> at some point. Because well, it's not a lot of money. I, I don't even care about the money. I just want everybody to know who's going. So, uh, right, so I can, I have their software, so I can see it. You can see everything. I can see everything. Talk to you. I believe we still have, to have you listed as one of the, you still have the yeah, actual down one. I know we have it. Yeah, yeah, but I don't have it. So, yeah. so I think Phil was on it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, again, yeah, just a matter of looking at both of them and seeing which one we right. think is better. Put the coin on In all honesty, we're never going to get. 15 people to sit and agree on one program. Yeah. But get two people they both agree. do the same thing. But a different two people to agree on one program. Yeah. yeah. Then tell everybody else what they're going to be carrying on their phone. Excellent. Look at that. I solved a problem. Call for the enjoyment. Okay. Um, Tyler, so Does anybody else have any major questions, comments, yeah. helpful suggestions? Yeah, I mean, I'll give it to the group for one house once and bring something first, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, uh, at the last meeting, we, we, we heard from uh, quite, quite a few people. And one of the things that, that, uh, that, that was repeated quite a few times by some of the, some of the members of, of Wellington Hill that spoke, and, and I know uh, Chief Snyder has said it uh, numerous times as well, and, I started thinking about this, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious. So I have a question for Tom, then I have a question for, for Peter and, and the, uh, the first selecting. So it's been stated um, a few times here in, in the last few meetings that <coughs> it's the opinion of Willington Hills members, and again, Tom, you've said it a few times as well, that the, the appropriate or the ultimate model for emergency services in Willington in your opinion, is that the the paid staff are limited to the ambulance only. Um, so, if there's a, a, a fire, they don't take a fire truck. If there's an accident, they don't take a rescue truck. They're they're, they're strictly for strictly for the ambulance, and that's what will respond to calls. So I started thinking about this, and because we're we're, we're separate agencies, if, if that if that methodology is is what you guys you know, believe is, is right for the town of Wellington. Why aren't you doing that now? Why aren't you saying to Alex, hey, we don't, when, when there's a call in our district, we only want the ambulance. We don't want any fire trucks. We don't want a rescue truck. We just want the ambulance, nothing else. So if, if, if we were to merge, and that was one of the suggested requirements of a merger, was that if we merge, then the, the, the paid staff have to be only limited to the ambulance. Why is it good then to do it? Why aren't you doing it right now if that's what you guys actually believe is the, is the ultimate solution? You can do it now. You have the statutory authority in your district to do that now. So why not do it now? Well, like I said, we, we come to an agreement a while back to do a response. So do a response is the most appropriate at this point. And when you combine, like I said before, it's not the fact that operationally how we're doing things. It's the fact that when you merge the two departments and the, and the two Paid and volunteer get together as one whole unit working together on everything day to day operations, truck cleaning, whatever, things like that. Um, you know, it just doesn't work. So that's where we come with this agreement. And it's not the end all be all that the ambulance has to be separate. That's a suggestion and only a suggestion at this point because that seems to work in other towns. And if you look around, like I said, the paid personnel syndrome is a thing in this county, in other departments, it's in the state, it's in the nation. It's a problem. So the only suggestion, again, is, is a suggestion. 
that we change it when, if we became one unit. Change it to operate that way because A, at this point we are getting personnel, you're getting volunteers, we're getting volunteers to go to fires, Robin's house or whatever. There we have four, maybe three or four major incidents a year and of those incidents we have volunteers come from your department, come from our department. So it's a suggestion again. I'll repeat that, that you know we can take care of it that way and if Wednesday at noon there's two volunteers that show up, we have mutual aid. And if things don't work, again, we change. It's not cutting the stone for the rest of our lives. It's you know just a suggestion to say, okay, this dynamic dynamic might work to do the end goal that we're all talking about. Here. I mean, it's a little bit more of a suggestion. You, you had personnel here that said they're going to quit. Well, again, they, their reasons were because they had no reason to go get a truck when they know somebody's paid to go get it. Why yeah. would they? But, but ultimate, and, and I, I understand that. And paid personnel syndrome is a thing for a reason. Statement, it's not just here. It's not just us making it up. It's a thing for a reason across the county, the state, so, the nation. But, but utilizing that argument that the pay guys are there quicker, the suggested solution is to actually increase the response time to a fire. So people can go get fire trucks? Well, I mean, there's a, there's, there's there's a, a, there's a toss up. You want to pay more people to be efficient and get there faster, or do you want to rely on volunteers as long as we possibly can and have a slight delay or a delay? Where the ambulance would go to any call anyway, they should. They should go to a fire. They should go to a fully staffed ambulance, should be at an accident, should be at a fire, it should be at everything. So, again, suggestions. If you got something better, by all means, put well, it on the tape. I, I do. I mean, I, and I think if it's not something better that will preserve not, the volunteers, it's not cost us down. It. I mean, as, a, as a first selectman, would you endorse any type of plan that takes the two paid people that sit down in that firehouse that are paid by the taxpayers for fire and EMS service? But again, you put not, it that to, way to not, to, to not go to fires. But you put it that way, and that's that you can't put it that way because they wouldn't be paid to go to fires and medical calls, and then they just don't but respond knowing, to fires. So knowing that we have You'd taxpayers have who pay for two staff members, and they're sitting back doing nothing when... Or bringing the animals to a They're going to bring the ambulance. They Meanwhile, they, in, in my mind, and keep in mind, I don't do what you do, okay? Um, I imagine you have... 10 volunteers that are coming. They're not all going to go to each of your firehouses and pick up a truck. Some of them are going to write to a scene, correct? Sure, but okay. depending on so the organization So if there's a fire truck at that up. scene, then now you have volunteers who are going to be able to use equipment that's there while you're waiting for other equipment. That's how I look at it. I, I can't imagine... But again, you say you sign off on, on having paid personnel that are sitting there trained to do both uh, currently is what we have. But the understanding would have to change that they are paid EMTs, paid medical, to take care of the training. Well, they're not. They're paid firefighters. But to current, right. but if you change it, they would be paid EMTs. Not, not I, saying I, they're well, expecting them I to take a fire I imagine you would get less, less you're, out of the employees at that point. What I'm having trouble with, Thomas, why would, you, why would you reduce the capability of two people that are already being paid by the taxpayers to provide, because fire, you're going to to reduce, provide fire and EMS services? Why would you limit Because them? ultimately you could reduce the volunteers in this town. And then you're going to have to pay. But we have people. that now. I guess I have a hard time understanding it because we have that now. Well, you heard. Like and I said. but you're saying that once it, it's it's they're still responding to the you're responding to the same calls. Again, I can't there. I can't explain it in detail. It's a thing that happens, and it's it's people have tried to explain it that if somebody's paid to go do a job, they're not going to get out of bed and go do it. It's a it's a it's a worldwide oh, thing. But isn't that what we have now? Yes, but you have yours. You're taking your trucks. You're taking ours. We're taking ours. You combine the two, it creates a whole new problem. But you're taking a heck of a risk by having an ambulance show up to a working structure fire with somebody's trapped inside. Well, we can't do nothing because we don't have any hosts. We chose to have lesser Again, there are departments that operate this way. What does Vernon do? You know, what do they yeah. do when they're ambulance shows up? I agree, up? and I know I'm on camera, I know somebody online, it's ridiculous, they shouldn't do that. Okay, well, does it work in Vernon? No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work I mean, in Vernon. But again, you know, there's other but departments that do it. Uh, no. Uh, so, uh, again, if you guys have a better suggestion, if you have something that's going to maintain the volunteers and combine the two departments, and not cost the town a million dollars a year as opposed to the, what do you get? Yeah, 600000 700000 a year? And I said this before, it, 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 there, there seems to be a, and this is more for the, the general audience, but there, there seems to be this, this disconnect or a, a, a belief that is being 
pushed out everywhere that there's a Willington one is a 100% paid department, Willington Hills is a 100% volunteer department. There, we're not 100% paid, we have two people that work there. There's two people. Two people do not make a fire department. Right, and you've always said that you don't have very many volunteers. No, we don't. And, and Tom, frankly, you don't either when you need them. I've been, well, I've been well, in two fires yeah. up the street that you didn't Combine go. Combine the two. You never went. Combine your volunteurs and our volunteers. I think you're, you're, you're all taking from but, the same small pool. Again, it would be yeah, we're, we're one small town, and you're all taking from the same pool of volunteers. So there's not a lot to go around to start with. So I just don't think... I guess, I guess I'll leave it at this. It, I, I, I think I understand. I, I, will, I will absolutely, 100% unequivocally, n never agree with, with, with something like that, which actually diminishes the services that currently exist in town. Well, that, then in a consolidation it. situation, you're going to, you're, you're basically saying that you are taking the chance that you're going to lose the volunteers and have to double your, your payroll. I never said that. No, but you're taking that chance it, because it, of, of well, the nationwide that, problem taking of that chance out. Yeah. Yeah. But your, 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 your theory is flawed because when you say that when you combine into one organization, you're, somehow, in your argument, you're going to gain more volunteers. I don't know how that's going to happen. No, no, no. I never you, said that. I think you said exactly the opposite. No, he didn't. He yeah. said if there were no paid staff, we'd have just as many volunteers, right. if not more. I guess, I guess that was, so the, that was question, part of the argument. How is it different from what you have today? Our volunteers would volunteer as well, as you guys say you have volunteers. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying we're going to gain more volunteers because... No, no, no. Because if you were to reduce the duties of the of the current current paid staff to the ambulance only. How are you going to make up for those volunteers to go get fire trucks? You said that you said that, that there would be an increase in participation. Why would it be better? Why 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 I'm just saying they would do what they do now. There would be an increase in participation. I mean you guys our guys get fire trucks. When there's a major incident, you have volunteers, our guys get fire trucks. When there's a car accident, we have personnel that show up. There's probably one fire alarm this year that a volunteer didn't show up to. And a fire alarm. We all know what that means. I mean, so we have personnel that are responding. And again, the, the few major incidents that we have a year, we have several volunteers that respond. Some from yours, some from ours. Where I have a hard time with it is what that delay, or what the increased delay would be. If there's, you know, again, it comes with a cost. There's no, there's no perfect. I don't think somebody's there. life is is worth the cost. Right. Well, I agree, but like right. I said, right. what choice do you want to make? You guys want to say, okay, this is the way we. I I can take anything you suggest back to my department. Okay, Tom, and Tom, where Tom, we what, what, what I'm what I'm struggling with internally here is why would a potential merger of two organizations have a negative have a negative impact. Well, why, I, I'm really having trouble with that. But how do you have aside the people say, aside the people who say if we could, if we decide I'm going to quit. So have town. you never heard of the paid personnel syndrome? Have you never heard of lack of volunteers when there's paid people involved? Have you never heard of that? I mean, you you have, and that's what I'm talking about. I'm not suggesting that you know. But that's but, but Tom, it's a it, thing. I've heard, I, we didn't create it. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying it. I've been around long enough. I know what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's self-inflicted. It's self-inflicted. By having people that are paid to do a job volunteers were doing and but you, can't, but, but you can't, in my opinion, you can't look at an organization that has paid staff and, and use that as a crutch for lack of volunteer participation. Go. Go to the calls. I don't give you a paid staff or not. Go. Again, but you Go. can say that, but people won't if somebody's getting paid to do the job. Well, but, but two people don't make a fire department. It's like you're sending out an right. NFPA certified right. down in the firehouse. They still need help. Every single call, they need help. Every single listen, call. Listen, we can go around and around. And, and you know, if you have a better suggestion, then put it in black and white. Well, my suggestion is go, get, to, go to the call side. Yeah. Well, go again, home. you, you want to take that chance. Put it, in, put it in writing, and I can take it to my department, or we can we can do whatever you suggest. I, 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 All right. I, I, I don't want to go around and around with you. I, 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 I have just visions. Let's make a second. Just a second. Everybody take a breath for just a second. Thank you. I, I, I can only hear from one side at a time because I'm having a hard time. Say if you're Go ahead. Interested. Um You used the example of Vernon. What about Ashford? They have paid personnel now. Why? They're no volunteers. Why do they have paid personnel? They actually increased their voluntary response, to be perfectly honest. 
to the well, again, I don't have the, the, uh, the facts. I just go by Tallman runs people. a joint response. Summers runs a joint response. Even runs a joint response in terms of the bringing the ambulance or a fire truck. Why don't you talk to them and ask them how to bring it in? Uh, I don't have all the ones. Well, you seem to know something about Vernon. Well, what about all these other well, ones? Well, I don't know all the facts. Right, I, right said that. I said I don't have all the information. And if you guys got a better model that works, bring it. I don't know if you read the Chronicle the last couple of days about Hampton Chaplain Ambulance, but right. they've announced they're closing April of 2020 because they have no volunteers. Right. They also have no paid personnel. Right. Paid personnel do not drive out the volunteers because there are none there. Scotland recently. What are they going to do for Ambulance? They don't know yet. They're trying to they're contract pay, those around the council. They're going to pay um, Scotland. They're going to people from the outside. Most well, likely, well, Manic or KB. So pay. Beyond everything. Yeah. So. Scotland got to the point where they couldn't staff their ambulance 50-60% uh, of the time. They begged Canterbury and Wall Manic to come and do it. Both towns refused. They hired their paid personnel to staff the ambulance. Because the town's under an obligation <coughs> to do that. Um, so to use the one example of Vernon having a separate uh, and it's not even separate ambulance court, it's part of the fire department, but they're uh, third-party employees, a large bunch of them now from Vintech. Vintech doesn't offer fire cross-trained people, they do EMS only, and that's what they've had to do to supplement their paid personnel is to go to an outside company. So you can't just pull one example and say, look at Vernon, they're doing so great. Again, I, I am pulling an example of, of what has happened or what, what's a problem around the country that I see you know, as far as paid personnel, they volunteer together. Okay. And I don't have all the numbers, I don't have all the facts. And again, if you guys have a model that would work better, bring it to the table. I mean, I'm certainly open to bring it to my department. If, if, if I could just That's interject for, for just effect. a second. I, from what I understand, nationwide, there's a huge volunteer shortage. And I think we got an article from that. Yep. Uh, you said it or something. Uh, yeah, I, okay, I don't know, something. Volunteer yeah, but the thing I'm seeing, and I, and, and I, it, it may be a mirage, <coughs> is that Lincoln Hill is bucking that trend. They are actually getting more volunteers. Well, let me say, I mean, we have volunteers, over the years. and we have a steady, you know, internal volunteers, mm -hmm. and they have some volunteers, and all we're looking to do is is preserve that volunteerism at all costs. Because, because it's still working. All right, still working. And, and our, we don't have a huge model has always been to preserve the volunteers that we have and try to get the volunteers engaged as well. Um, How many volunteers do you have? Oh, we get about 15. Yeah. Just, How many volunteers do you got? About 30 or 40. But I, I, the 30 or 40, they all EMT firefighter ones. No, of course not. No, of course they all not. operate. They're all volunteers. Some are seeing support. Some are showing up as truck drivers. Some are showing up as again. You know how it works. I know how it works. But yeah. can you sit here and say, okay, we're looking one the model we like is you guys are only going to run the ambulance. Can you sit there and say today that you can cover every single fire call during the day, every single fire call during the night, on the weekends, on the holidays, and you can get a rescue truck every single accident? Are you willing to say that? I could sit here and say that the way the trend has gone, and looking at the numbers of what we do now, when there's an accident, we get coverage. We get people to go. Right. When there's a fire, we get people to go. There is mutual aid that comes. There's mutual aid we can rely on more. It's just, you know, I don't have all the answers, but again, right. look at the numbers, Rod. Everybody, there's people showing up to almost every. Yeah, but the question in terms is, of fire and rest. People show up. I can show up to a cop. I have no right, qualifications. Right. Well, if you get I'm a worthless. Again, I hate, to say, I hate to say it, but you cannot force people and you get what you pay for. But if you want to pay for a fully trained staff to show up at every incident, then do that. No, we don't want to bring that to the tax We don't say, want to pay for that either. Well, we, then, we utilize our volunteers as much as we possibly can. Right. But in good conscience, I can't think of switching just to a, an ambul a paid ambulance with a fully volunteer fire being the best model for our town. Well, there has to be another solution. Well, let's find one. That's why we're <laughs> there here. There has to be. I, I can't let's see find a it. delay of, I'm going to use seven, not, eight I'm, I'm not saying you're saying it's got to be my way or the highway. We're willing to do what Hill's way or the highway. Well, then it is what we last week was, we would do, you know, it's our way or the highway. We're leaving if you what do you want to do with that? Do, this, do that model. What do you want to do with that? Sit there and say, ah, screw it. But why are those guys going? here to you begin with? Do they really want to help the town? Well, they're here for their own ego. All right. Wait a second. Okay. We're, we're, we're running in a circle. I've, I've heard all this before, so. Can I make a comment? Gonna, yeah, go ahead. I'm about the oldest in the department. 
You are. We, you are. Are. we, <laughs> are. we started the ambulance. Okay? It was all volunteer. Great. Everybody responded. After a while, they got sick of the volunteers responded. The same ones all the time. All the time. So they decided, let's get a paid personnel to cover it. To take the burden off of the volunteers a little bit. And that's how it started. Because the volunteers got sick of all. Only two or three always volunteered. And they lived close by. So eventually, we started to have a paid man on the days. And that was great. The ambulance got on the call. The fire trucks got on the call. Then at night, what happens? Five o'clock comes. Oh, volunteers. Well, they didn't seem to show up. Why? No one really knows. So we decided we'll put another man on at night. And so that's how this all started. Because of the volunteers, got really worked out in, in, in the town of Wellington. Now, if Wellington one has the ambulance, I would say this month, give it to Wellington Hill for a month. Let them handle it. And next month, give it back. And let's see how it works. To see how the pressure is on them versus well, us. Do we get the 600000 that goes with it? I'm not saying paid. Well, I'm saying, saying volunteer? To volu go on the volunteer position. Okay? You covered our volunteer. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's, that's let's, my, let's that's all I want to Thank say. you. And, 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 and I, th I, I, I think what you added was valuable, and I'm not sure how yet, but let me let me sit around and, and digest it for a while. <clears throat> can, can I ask, I heard a lot about how many volunteers you have from the town's perspective. How many fully trained volunteers do each department bring to the table that could assist in a, say, a major structure of iron? That's a, you have to be... I'm sorry, you have to be careful how you word that error because you can have numerous people that show up to a house fire and as an incident commander you have to evaluate all the people that are there and be very careful what you assign them to. You can't take somebody that shows up to you, has your gear on, has a, has a Scott pack on, has a beard and say go into that building. You can't do that. That person at the moment can pull some hose or go get an axe like that. But they can't really do, they can't do interior structural firefighting. So you have to you have to look at the pool that shows up, and, and so when you ask that question, it's I think you're asking is how many how many volunteers does each organization have that are qualified to perform all functions? Yes. MRT, EMT, appara um, you know apparatus driving, pumping, and full SCBA certified for interior structural firefighting. That that that's a number. Okay. Then there's another number that how many people do you have going to calls? Well, there's probably 60 or 70 between the, two, between the two organizations because the structure fire brings up everybody and their brother. Mm -hmm. Are they, are they, is it, are we thankful, combined, are we thankful that they came? Is there a role for them? Sometimes. Sometimes not. Showing up, you know, showing up to a, 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 a vehicle fire, an auto wax and extrication, or a, a structure fire that's a room and contents fire with, you know, two juniors and, and, Ron Yannick is not a very effective firefighting force because you're extremely limited on what you can do. So you have to, it's a loaded question. Fires yeah. see Ron Yannick and they go out right away. That's right. <laughs> wow. So, so from the question you asked me before, that concerns me from the, from the town's perspective. Yeah. At saying, now we're going to take the paid personnel we have and limit their capabilities even more. Well, be, and, and because uh, because it's volunteer for both departments, yeah. you don't know what you're going to get at any given call. So now we just yeah. cut off the source of. I should have said that. I should have said that before. They're, 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 yeah, the people that, that work there are required to be trained to a certain level where they can perform, you know, the, the, the mitigation of any hazard. Um, so I should have said that before. You know what you're getting when you have at least two right. people going that do not make a fire department by no means whatsoever. It is not a career department. But with volunteers, we don't you, know. You don't know. We don't you know what you're getting. Don't That's what I'm hearing. You don't correct. know what you're getting. From either side. And so we've shortened that a, a little bit more if we go with a model that limits the capabilities it's, of the paid staff. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's disingenuous to say that we have people that go to, we have volunteers that go to every single call all the time. On the face of it, that is a fact. 
do you have qualified people to perform the function at hand to go to calls every single time? Absolutely not. No. So Neither fire, side does. A fire administrator who got everybody up and running to a certain extent would be helpful? He would corral the cats. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know, I'm just, you know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry to steal you. But there's, I'm, I'm there's only. Trying to give you but, an but there's also. It's, it's you're doing question. in time. <laughs> in my defense, there's only so much of a volunteer that we can say, listen, I can't go to James, I'm going to pick on you. If James showed up on fire today, James can't go to the building, right? Right. So it's our responsibility to make sure that we're doing that. The fire administrator would have to do that as well. The fire administrator is not going to be on scene. Right. And, and, and being the ones and, that corral and, that. And I think there's a huge difference between administration and operation. Absolutely. That there are a, lot of people, uh, a lot of people miss. I've, I've seen that that miss really cost. Um, all right. Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Um, I, I mentioned this before, and I'll address this to everybody, but specifically the two chiefs. Is it worth talking about operationally continuing the way we are? I, I mean, it's basically separate companies. Emails, everything basically the way it is, but somehow um, formulating a structure, a hierarchy where you have a chief or a deputy for each, like it is now, a head of each station. But then somehow at the top, I don't, I don't know who exactly, how, how you can do that, a chief or an admin, somebody uh, that, that could do the the administration part, get to the training together, make things go more smoothly in, in, in concert with the chiefs or the deputy chiefs, whatever you call them. Just, you know, why can't we have it all? Why can't we do everything? That's what, that's what I don't understand. Why we can't. I, I, we, we I think that's exactly this. what I was thinking that, when I had mentioned yeah, that an administrator who can do that and the plan, forward planning and look out for the. Uh, yeah. Not for the. Clean up the the things that we need to clean up, get things together on training and operationally, and try to work things together, but continue addressing Chief Snyder and, and the member of Willing, members of Willing Hill concerned about the volunteerism. Continue the emails, Willing one, the way it's going. Keep it separate. Keep it the way it's, don't wreck what's working now, but fix the things that aren't working as you go up higher up in the chain. Maybe focus on how, how that could be done. And I don't know if that's acceptable or not. I'm just I'm I mean, just anything's acceptable if we can come up with a plan. Oh, I mean, if we can come up with a plan that will work, it looks like it'll work, then anything's acceptable. I'm looking for suggestions from or do you think it would be or from would anybody be, that would be has a better idea. Reject it out of hand. Let's let's just just because it's too scary or I I don't, I don't know. You know? Again, I don't think anything would be rejected. It's just a matter of if it's put together properly and presented properly, and the world looks like it might work. Um, that's when we have to get to the, to the details of the whole thing. And an administrator, we keep going back to the administrator. I mean, you got to look for, again, the cost and the unbiased individual, which is almost impossible to find in this town one way or another. Right. Well, you well, you guys, think well, I think that if somebody from town to announce right hire. Right. I think I think your idea is it has a lot of merit. I think it might just by my experience of listening and I think it's a probably a non start. I I don't I don't see it. I don't see it as a paid administrator personally, just my own opinion. Which is kind of why I'm Well I I, I need to I, know I think the that idea function the, is, the idea is of that right and, and what that would accomplish would be good. I think the cost and and, and, and the chemistry of who you get. I don't, I don't think you're ever going to find anybody. Uh, yeah, it's easy to say. Right? Yeah. So, yes. Tom, okay. Is your suggestion like a volunteered administrator? Is that yes. what I'm hearing you say? Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, maybe even the, so I, think I, don't, I don't know exactly how, but a chief or an administrator, okay. a, a volunteer. Like we do it now, we maybe the departments pick it. I don't know. I don't know how. Right. I'm just. I saying. just want to make sure that's the, that's I, the I, difference I between your suggestion and Peter's is a paid staff, a paid person to the right. district, and someone who still works right. the same my, way. My thought now would be a volunteer. I think position. that. I think even that part of it would be hard if it's a volunteer position. That's a lot. 
yeah. it's a big ask for so someone outside of town. It's a big ask town. for uh, uh, somebody outside of town. town. Yes. You're not going to right. You're not going to get someone to come in from town, out of town. I, I can't imagine. I'm not going to say it's um, impossible. I think anything is yeah. possible. I think Stuart's suggestion was, is, is an alternative that to get us to the same place. Of course, nobody oh, listens to Stuart but me. I yeah, listen Stuart to Stuart. Stuart said this board should continue. To <laughs> Stuart, Stuart said this board should, a board such as this could could iron out a lot of those problems. But I believe Coventry right. has a standing committee with representation from the fire departments, the fire commission, the police, yeah. and the public works. Decision. And they meet, I believe, monthly to talk about public safety issues throughout town. Sounds like a fire commission to me. Yeah. Pretty close. <laughs> I, I, can I make a comment if you want? Sure. I, I think we need to, I know we gave a goal of 14 months to try to decide whether we need consolidation or not. I really think we'll come up with a plan. We'll yeah. come up with a plan. Whatever it may be, like that was suggested. I think at our next meeting we need to try to decide in which direction that's going to be. Of, Otherwise, we're going to be sitting here spinning our wheels and going back and forth at each other. Right. We got a lot for of the, the 14 months. We got a lot of the information. I mean, from the membership, we got a lot of information from here. So we can bring some more information, but we need suggestions. Yep. We need suggestions. We need. You know. I, I think next meeting would be. I, I think I asked meeting. for that, and I got silence for this meeting. So I'm going to put that back on yeah, the next thing. Call for meeting. solutions. Can we email out the SWAT stuff? Yes. To everybody. I will. I will do that as soon as I get Wi-Fi. -like. Um, a few years ago, the State Fire Commission, uh, the Fire Academy, put on a uh, class about recruitment and retention that uh, was held in Windsor. And it was interesting that it was held there because that was a town that I believe had five, at one point, volunteer fire companies separately, you know, their own chiefs, their own budgets, uh, they're completely separate. And at some point, the town decided to uh, put them under one management lead. So they, they took a fire chief, a fire chief, I don't know who or what they got, and said, you're in charge of all five fire departments now. And I spoke with one of the deputy chiefs of one of the companies, and he said that didn't accomplish what they wanted because in their minds, there were still five separate fire companies. They were still competing for equipment and apparatus. People they were competing to fundraisers and, you know, Company X would do a fundraiser and Company Y wouldn't help because those are them uh, and not us. And even down to on a fire, they felt responsible for their truck and their responsibilities and it wasn't one department. And so even though they got one administrative chief and one budget out of the deal, they did not make one department out of it and there were still five separate visions going on as to you know what they thought they should do and uh, how they would behave and what equipment they wanted and so on. That was the experience that I heard from Windsor. And they went to, there's still one department, but there's still separate agencies, so to speak. Uh, they just have a deputy chief in front, charge of each department instead of a chief. I just want to go over one more thing first, and then I'm with you. This is a first. Jeez. This is the first time in my <laughs> life that I have not taken an adjournment uh, suggestion full force. All right. I sat down the other night because this committee is spending way more time in my head than it should. And I wrote down a list of things that I think are true. All right? And I'm going to read off my list. It's only five things. And please correct me if I am wrong. Yeah, these are. If, if it's not, if it seems are partly not true, let me know. All right. Right now, I don't think the town of Willington can afford a full-time, fully staffed, paid fire department. True. Agreed. Okay. And right now, I think that many of our current volunteer firefighters are reticent to be in a paid volunteer combination fire department. All right. No. All right. If I add this, the uh, in half of town in half of the departments, would that make it a true statement? I think I, I think maybe 
I need to go talk to their department as, 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 on a, some kind of listening tour. Well, I yeah, I mean, I think from willing to I'm, I'm not going to tell them anything, but I, I think well, I'd like to feel have um, agita regarding it. But I mean, we're we're proof that it's a wonderful marriage that, that is worked many years. Then yeah. we have a monthly meeting next Tuesday. You're welcome to come. <laughs> Hey, we can just pull up numbers. I mean, just show them. All right, you meet on a Tuesday basis as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Different we just yeah, yeah we just had yeah. our monthly meeting this All right. yesterday. All right, here's what I my next ask then is: Can you send me a text or an email or something saying when your meetings are, even if it's something as simple as the first Tuesday of the month or whatever? And can you do the same thing for me so I can put that on my calendar and, and maybe try to fit it in? Alex, you're going to do a schedule for the year. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, things that I think are true number three. Fire and emergency calls are better attended, and, and I put the word fun in, 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 in quotes because that's not the word I wanted, but I didn't know what word I wanted to respond to than EMS calls. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you got to say yes to that one. And it's, it's, it's more, I think, that fun. I think it's more that they know there's a Nobody necessity. Nobody wants to go two hours to Hartford. Right. Right. And, there's more, and we know that there's more necessity. In, uh, and that might be some right. of why there's a paid ambulance. <laughs> so that, that could be. And, and, and I, and two in the morning, not everyone. Not everyone that's that's exactly hardly right. why I think it's true. Right. It is it's exactly why. Nobody wants to do the ambulance. All right. Or can't. Things that are true, and I think are true number four, yet. EMS calls are what fund, fund 17. And number five, Fund 17 brings in less revenue than the paid personnel cost. And I just changed that from a more than to a less than based on the decision earlier tonight. Now I will entertain your motion. Please make it. Oh, you have to do, you have to do public comment again. Oh, yeah. Oh. Good and welfare. Good and welfare. Do you have any good and welfare? We had a public comment at the beginning or present to speak at the beginning. Does anybody else want to say anything? Anything good in welfare? Any of your members do something spectacular? Anything out of the way here? Any of your members? We're hoping the ambulance will be back tomorrow. All right, where's the ambulance? Good. No, that's, not good. That's not funding Fund 17 very well. Um, all right, entertaining your motion. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.